On the phone with me right now, I get the privilege of speaking to the founding executive director of the UCLA. This is, okay, this is through Remo Drums. There's a wonderful, wonderful organization right now, but they're working with UCLA Arts and Healing. If you like, you can learn more about them and the woman I'm about to speak with, UCLA Arts and Healing.org. On the phone with me right now, I have Ping Ho. Hello, and how are you? Hi, thank you. Thank you so much for including me in this interview today. I'm so happy to have you here. Um, can you tell me a little bit about UCLA Arts and Healing's, uh, uh, their relationship with Remo Drums right now? Oh, absolutely. Um, we actually facilitate the use of the arts in the community um, as a tool for healing uh, and transformation. And uh, this is, goes perfectly with the um, uh, vision of Remo Incorporated, which is to bring the healing benefits of drumming to everyone in the community. And uh, I didn't actually start off being a drumming aficionado. I actually did a study of it back in 2007, um, where we actually based on adult research on uh, that showed biological and psychological evidence of stress reduction through group drumming, we decided to actually see if that could be demonstrated in children. So we actually integrated activities from group drumming with activities from group counseling and, um, and using a positive development approach, tried to build skills such as focus and listening, self-esteem, positive risk-taking, expressing feelings, managing stress, empathy and gratitude, and we actually um, found that in this hybrid program delivered to children that we got uh, found significant reductions in all sorts of problem behaviors related to such things as inattention, um, withdrawn depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress. Wow. Um, it was really amazing, uh, and as a result, um, we actually took this program. It is now a scripted program called Beat the Odds, and it's also adaptable to all kinds of populations. So we've worked with uh, Remo very closely since that time to actually try to um, give them input on what our perception of community needs were, and they've been extremely receptive, receptive because they believe in doing well by doing good. Right. So um, they have developed a line of drums for us to use, which are light weight, they're durable, they nest within each other to enable easier storage. They also have a comfort sound technology option, which is a lower pitch drum head to facilitate um, rhythm um, without overstimulation, especially for people with sound sensitivity. And uh, we find that not only is that effective, but people with sound sensitivity actually really enjoy listening to that deep, rich sound that the comfort sound technology provides. So we're incredibly grateful, and we are actually so grateful um, for these products, and we so believe in them that we actually offer grants to the community so that they can have even greater access to these wonderful, wonderful products. Um, The Versa line of products is what we've been using, the very lightweight, uh, full-sized drums. What a great idea that that can just, it's like the water droplet. It's a ripple effect where it gets to vibrate beyond the program. How wonderful that they, the patients respond, you know, medically. You're, you're seeing almost immediately, it sounds like, response to what the patients are involved with. Oh, absolutely. Um, and these are actually regular school children, and I think that's what made our study so amazing is we took a whole classroom of kids, and we actually had the person delivering the uh, drumming was actually not a drumming expert. And what we have since found is that anyone can deliver this with integrity. The program is scripted, and um, kids love it. Boys love it. Girls love it. Anyone can participate in it. That's really the beauty of group drumming is that anyone can participate and that drumming is such a big part of so many cultures that um, it enables all of us to connect to it and to be together when we might otherwise be separated. Uh, And this kind of uh, is an organic way of building empathy Mm. and uh, building community. and, um, And it's what we call embodied learning. You're not just learning about how 
uh, other people are or think or feel in your head, you're actually having a connected live experience in mind and body. And it leads to much deeper learning and much more meaningful dialogue. A nice, meaningful human connection. I love that UCLA Arts and Healing that you have come together to see the benefit of the arts in people's lives. And what a wonderful experience for you. How long have you have you been involved with the UCLA Arts and Healing Initiative? Well, the whole thing started back in 2004 uh, when we just experimented offering a specific program each month um, on a different topic, and drumming was one of them. Mm. And that's actually how we connected with the Remo company. Um, we were working with Christine Stevens, a music therapist who gave a presentation and discovered a gigantic interest in the community uh, for group drumming. And um, the more I learned about it, the more I became convinced that it was what I consider to be the ideal introduction to an arts experience because everyone is safe behind their drum. They can participate at whatever level they're comfortable, and they're still part of the group. And we sit in a circle. So the drum circles are in a circle for a reason. So we can all see each other and connect, and that seeing is part of empathy development. And we listen to each other, and we play back what we hear, and that's also... Uh, an element of empathy. So empathy is created in the process of just being together in a circle. And it turns out that repetitive rhythm is actually uh, relaxation promoting, that this is a, you know, this is known in the field of music therapy, that um, it's, it's great at promoting the relaxation response. And the other thing that drumming does is it keeps us in the present moment which is stress-reducing. Oh, how, how deep, nice. We could all use a little of that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then the other element of recreational group drumming is that that kind of drumming does not carry expectations of perfection or mastery, and so it reduces self-judgment and performance mm. anxiety, which then encourages greater self-expression and participation in classroom and other activities. So this is what we hear from others. This is what we uh, continuously see in the community, that once um, a, a young person has an opportunity to experience um, free creative expression without judgment, that they start participating more fully in other things, in other classroom activities, in other music classes, in other settings, because the principle trans transfers over. Wonderful. And uh, the other thing, too, that... Um, I used to work very closely with Norman Cousins, who was a uh, oh, yes. medical humanitarian. Yes. And the one who was known for... Vitamin uh, C and cancer. Yeah, vitamin C and laughter <laughs> to um, overcome yes. an incurable um, connective tissue disease. Yes. And he used to say that laughter was a metaphor for the full range of positive emotions. And what we find continuously in drum circles is that... Um, because creative expression, this is not judgmental, and it embraces mistakes and creativity, there is joy and laughter mm. that always comes with it. And this is especially meaningful for people for whom joy and laughter is absent in their lives, mm. especially children and adults who've experienced trauma. Yes. So um, anyway, the, the other thing, too, is uh, in... In academic settings, um, there are some children who don't connect with standard educational practices, and uh, group drumming gives them an opportunity to shine and for others to see this talent and this, these other um, within them and for kids to communicate with each other non-verbally and to create a relationship, which actually... Um, uh, there's this wonderful story. Um, we trained uh, one of the counselors in the Los Angeles Unified School District. Um, we trained a whole division of them, actually. But one of them reported to us that what she did in her counseling groups was she intentionally put kids who didn't get along with each other together in a circle. And um, she would have them share something verbally. And she had a little tiny frame drum, a really thin little thing that we gave each teacher or each counselor during the training. And she would pass it around the circle so that as each child shared something verbally, they would also play something. And the kids grew to love that so much that they actually formed a group identity and they stopped fighting with each other oh. on the playground because you don't beat up a member of your group. And I think that's just 
kind of says it all right there. Comfort sound technology might be the end of bullying. Wouldn't that be great? It would be fantastic. Right? And it enables you to then beat a drum in the classroom without disturbing the classroom next door. Exactly. (laughs) There you go. Well, thank you. Ping Ho, Executive Director of UCLA Arts and Healing, thank you for speaking to us today about remote drums and their comfort sound technology and how you're using it at the Arts and Healing Initiative. Very, very grateful to speak with you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. All right. Have a wonderful day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.